And they also excelled. So in 10 minutes now, listen. We are going to read 2 Kings chapter 7. One to eight. And as we usually do, we stand up to read our first Bible reading. I'll read one verse, you read the second one until we get to verse eight. Can we be on our feet? Ten minutes, I'll just speak on one or two things. The man of God is the one that God has prepared for the service. Put it on screen for us. Second Kings chapter seven. One to eight. I'll take one, verse one. You take, and make sure you hold on to these truths. I don't know why you put that daddy at the corner of a nursing mother's. Is he a nursing father? Give him a honorable seat. I want nursing mother near daddy. Emma Bonwaju. Emma Bombi. I want Yato Neom baby lower. You want Fisibe. God bless you, sir. Omo she be kia. She won't daddy none tomo lo one. Okay. Are we set? One, two, and let. I will read verse one. You read verse two. Then Elisha said, "Hear ye the word of the Lord. First hear the Lord. Tomorrow about this time, shall a mare of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two mares of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria." Now you will read verse two. Give them verse two. Let's go. You know, it's an insult to God. That's why Elijah answered straight. You will see it with your eyes. But that's not where I'm going. Verse 3. Verse 3. Let me take verse 3. And there, and there were four leprous men at the entering in of the gate. And they said one to another, why sit we here until we'll die? Now you take verse 4. Show us verse 4. Thank you. Let's go. If we say we will enter into the city. Then the farmer is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. Now therefore, come and let us fall unto the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. You know, I assisted in reading your verse. I'm reading alone. Verse 5. And they rose up in Twilight to go unto the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there, not a person. Now you read verse 6. Let's go. Let's go. For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Syria had hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the king of the Egyptians to come upon us. I read verse 7. Wherefore, they arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents and their horses and their asses, even the camp as it was, and fled for their lives. Now you read verse 8. Let's go. And when these leopards came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent and did eat and drink, and carried their, their silver and gold, and remnant, and went and hid it, and came again, and entered into another tent, and carried things also, and went and hid it. Be seated in his presence. I don't want to take time. The man of God is here. Now listen. Except we deceive ourselves, we all know that we are in difficult seasons. Am I communicating? Now, in, it has never happened like this in Nigeria before that people will deliberately skip work and they will not be sacked. I go on Monday, I won't go on Tuesday. I go on Wednesday, I won't go on Thursday. Why? Because of the increase of fuel based on the decision of the president that subsidy be removed. Now, and we know that after that announcement, everything in Nigeria 
went up. In fact, I was told of recent that even house rent has gone up. Some people say seriously. How did covenant people excel? We've been talking about these topics. And this will be this, uh, part seven. No, Mama took part seven in the first service. This part eight. I took part six at the Alebu church this morning. She took part seven. Now, the part seven she took here is what will be taken at the Alebu church next week. These four lepers, I want you to listen to them, study them. They sat at the borders of the town. And they said, why should we sit down here and just die like this? You know, we've been teaching you the importance of God's voice. But can I tell you this one truth? Hello? Hello? God will not speak in every situation. What he expects you to use your brain to do, his voice will not do it. There are problems that it, God did not program it, right? It's his voice that will solve it. God programmed some problem to be solved by your brain. That's why these men, four of them, they sat down. Why are we sitting down here and we just waste away like this? Can you see that they came to a logical reasoning? Which means our sitting down here has not produced anything. Who told them that? Their thinking told them. The late Archbishop Benson also said, God gave man brain so that man can give God rest. If you have brain and you are still troubling God over issues that you should use your brain to solve, you'll just be wasting your time. They now said, one, if we sit down here, conclusion will die. If we go back into the city, there is no food in it. There is scarcity in the city. If we go to the city, option, death. They were thinking, oh. And number three, they said, wait, if we go into the camp of the Syrians, they could show us mercy and they could kill us. So which means that the third option had two answers. Or can I say two provisions? The remaining two had only one provision, dead to me. So let's not. But this one has either death or life. Let's try the one that has death or life. And you will see that all the seasons when they were busy thinking, God was what? Silent. God never said a single word. Then they, 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 they arose. They went to the camp of the Syrians. And beloved, it was empty. They entered. The Bible says they packed silver. They packed gold. They gathered food. And they went and hid it. You know what that made them? It made them to be financially buoyant. How did they arrive being financially buoyant in difficult season? They were able to use their mind. Listen, let me tell you this quick truth. I have three minutes more. Covenant people excelled in difficult seasons because they were creative. I come again. Covenant people excelled in difficult seasons because they were creative. Not because they only prayed. They added creativity to their prayer. And let me ask you this, and let me tell you this quickly. How do you arrive at creativity? You arrive at creativity when you engage your mind. Some of us don't use our mind at all. We don't engage it at all. Somebody, a scientist made a research, and they came out that in our mind, we have about over 900 million neurons. It's like muscles waiting for you to explore them. But most people don't use their minds. Engage your mind this season. And what should you engage your mind in? Engage your mind in finding solutions that people will be willing to pay for. Nobody has enough money to give around. But can I tell you, 
people will find money to pay for what they will enjoy. That's why you will see that once a doctor declares that somebody has a disease that is terminal, and the doctor said, uh, this disease that is terminal, for it to be cured, so, so, and so, amount is needed. You'll be shocked. The person that is looking haggard, that does not have money, we rush and discover that he has something to sell. He will rush and discover that he has families to take money from. And you'll be shocked. They will come back to the hospital with cash. Do you know why some of us are broke? So you not say I'm abusing you. That's why I use us. It's because we don't have enough solution to deliver to our world that the people will be willing to pay for. These three leopards changed their lives using their minds as the tool. You know those that we excel now are those that do, they are those that use their mind. There are problems all over. I come again, there are problems all over. I come again, there are problems all over that nobody is solving. That people are looking for people to give money to to help them solve. I want you to begin to think like these leopards. Why we, should we just sit down where we are and die? Why should we do what everybody are doing and die? What option else do we have? Everybody, this season, go back to your thinking room. I will tell you this quick story as I round up. I was driving into our estate yesterday and uh, I saw this uh, small complex of about, let me not call it a complex, but I will dignify it. Let me call it a complex with about four shops and a toilet. Somebody was constructing it at the entrance of our estate. You know? And I saw it. I said, wow, this place will be good for business. You know, I'm not only a pastor. This place will be good for business. So I was parking, thinking of talking to the person, and I discovered that the person was the landlady of the building. As I was parking, another person too came up. So I, I paused for that person to come out. The person came out and said, Ma, I came for these shops. She said, we are still constructing. We are still constructing. I don't yet even know the price that I'm going to fix. He said, sir, please, can I help you too, sir? I said, I also came for the shops. How much do you want to rent these shops out? He said, sir, I'm, we are still constructing, sir. I don't know how much we are going to fix. We are still constructing. Then somebody said, there are about 20 people that are lining up for these four shops. And the owner is still constructing. And I said to myself, there's money everywhere. There's what? Money everywhere. The problem is that people are not thinking. Now, everybody now is at her mercy. Not big shop. Not something that she spent either, uh, you know, uh, when we say, uh, it's not a sophisticated shop. But because the location was right. Beloved, use your mind. You will see that people will be using money to look for you. Come out of, when you talk about using your mind, come out of the box. The people came out of where they knew. They knew Israel. They knew where they were staying. Some of you, it is that work that you learned. That you, the only thing you are thinking about. What you graduated from, from school, is the only thing you have come out of the box. They have never been to the camp of the Syrians before. Must you, must you die as a Baba because you learnt, you learnt Baba, eh? Come out of the box. Some of you say, in fact, you don't understand. Sir, 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 if your business is not giving you money, hear me. Is either you are in the wrong location or it's the wrong business. The Bible says they went to the camp of the Syrians. Will somebody come out of the box? I'm asking. Will you come out of the box? Start thinking in directions that you have not been thinking before. And you will see that this, like this leprous man, 
you, you will come out to become a giant. The Bible says the prophecy that Elisha gave that by this time tomorrow, it was these four men. <laughs> uh, in verse 9, the Bible says they said, we are not doing ourselves well by keeping this information to ourselves. Somebody should go to the city. Let's go and tell them. You know, these four men became the heroes. Why? They thought out of the box. I have seen somebody that graduated from university as a barista that is into waste management in Lagos. Law Loshe, New University. But he discovered that people have a lot of waste, but nobody to help lift them. He went to the government, negotiated with the government. The government gave her permission. She went to negotiate for the dump site. You know it belongs to government too. Government gave her dump site. She went to negotiate with the trucks that will lift the waste bin. Government gave her permit. Then she went to talk to the people in the community. Um, I'll be lifting your padrum once per month for so so and so amount. They agreed that this thing is always smelling. So once per month, you know what she will do? She had done her calculations well. She will go and pay them at the dump site, pay the truck driver, pay the boys that will lift from her calculations. She doesn't need to go anywhere. The people know that they are to pack the waste of the ex estate. A barista. And they all will go pack the whole thing. And you know what enters our phone? Tororum, tororum. Tororum, tororum. Without touching the waste. But what did she study in school? Law. Come out of the box. You shall see yourself at the top. If you are blessed, put your hands together for Jesus. Let's be on our feet as we...